Hello, and welcome to Painly Thorough Satirical Pu- th- uh, Fuck. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? You recording? Okay. Hello, and welcome to Painfully Thorough Satirical Theater. Today oh, are- we're still calling this? I mean, do you want to change it? Well, I thought you had a, I thought you had a different name in mind, something to do with the, the shitty wall joke you made. I mean, I, I guess. Because, well, you could just call it the podcast, just saying. I mean, okay. you need an overly Hello. complex name. Wait, wait, let's, let's rewind. Okay. No, let's fast forward. <laughs> wow, that was a great podcast, guys. <laughs> ah, shit, goddammit. Press stop, <laughs> I need to go take a shit. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Breaking the Third Wall. Today our panel is... It's fourth wall. No, we've Let's had this continue. conversation. Trust me. Vaguely someone, also yeah. known as Harry. Yeah, fucking fuck all of you. Noah's Ark, 705, also known as Noah. Yeah, hi. Um, it's great to be here. I'm not sure why Jack invited me. We love you, 705! Oh, thank you. But thank anyways, you. Well, give me your money. Give me your money. I'll give you my breasts. Uh... They're male! And it... Vague, please. And always, v- vague. I see myself, you wearing the wig Jack there. Plays. Wearing a wig? Yeah, wearing a wig. That's like you were acting like a woman in the crowd. You're wearing a wig. I know you want to wig. We went, we went over this in like the pre-show or something like that. You like, if you want this, you have to go to Thailand at the very least. I think it's legal there. Anyway, Jack, you can right. kick things off because yeah. I'm just gonna keep talking about shit I don't understand. Okay. Let me turn my levels up a little bit. All right. Um, yeah, the levels might have been a little bit off last time in the pre-show, but I think that will be okay. Uh, all right. So we're gonna change the uh, flow of the new style of podcast. We're gonna do. We're gonna talk about some movies, some video games, and all that stuff, and of course Star Wars. And uh, yeah, let's start it off with. You know, something that we can all probably talk about. Rocket League is now an official eSport. Oh, that was... It's not... I mean, kind of, but it just... It, it Wait, got accepted. Is it... No, it got is... accepted into the like the, the company that sort of basically does the eSport isn't, thing ESL. Isn't Rocket League just Griffball with cars? What is Griffball? You I'm mean... Gr- Griffball. It's, it's, it's a you Halo game mode where you get a ball... Yeah, it's it's a Halo game mode where you take, like, a ball. It's kind of like soccer, but you t- take a ball and you put it in their net and you only use gravity hammers. Only replace guys with gravity hammers with cars, and it's that. And I'm not going to say I I I hate it, but I'm 90% sure that this was actually, like... Wasn't Rocket League a sequel to a game that had, like, a lot more content? Rocket League there? was a sequel to something called Super Battle Acrobatic Rocket Vehicles or some shit. way better. I mean, yeah. for the time I could play it. Um, I don't know. There's... It seems cool, but it, I, yeah. I'm, it's not my cup of tea. I have the same computer that Steam is selling as the Steam Machine. And there's been a few problems, like... <clears throat> Windows 8, of course, like, that happens sometimes the uh, alien UI, things like that. The controller that they give you <clears throat> has some, sometimes some compatibility issues with some applications that it's supposed to work on. I mean, it's so, a Steam controller, right? The one with the weird touchpad toggle well, thing? Yeah, you know, when I bought it, it actually came with a Xbox 360 controller. So, oh, yeah. okay. Yep. So it's not forcing you to use that really weird looking design that I feel like won't work if your hands get sweaty. Yeah. The only thing is, if you plug it in and activate it, it will act as if it's the mouse. And there's some things that you have to go around and all that, but yeah. That's why I couldn't play Rocket League or a lot of video games for the longest time with a controller. That's, that's really weird. That's yeah. really weird. Very old. I mean, it bypasses all of the stuff saying, like, hey, you should turn off the mouse to uh, gamepad emulation thing. But she yeah. says, doesn't Windows 8 have native Xbox 360 controller support? Yes, but it's a whole bunch of stuff with the alien UI and all that. But I figured it out. So, so, I can... it's, so yeah. it's, less, it's less Windows fault and more the Alienware thing? Uh, sort of. A bunch of yeah. things meshing with each other that didn't really mesh. Uh. 
Yeah. Look, when you're okay. confused, blame a version of Windows that has already been dubbed the shit. So yeah. it's either Windows 8's fault well, I'm or it's Vista. Blaming, I'm already <laughs> blaming Windows 10 on a bunch of stuff. I've already heard that's not too great with games, never mind the fact that... Okay, that's a really small thing. That's a bit off topic. But when I'm playing with Windows 10, and I've noticed no problems with any other games besides Team Fortress. And before, like, here's the thing. Windows 8 just never happened. I'm not sure why it happened with Windows 10, but it just did. Where I'll be playing the game fine, and then all of a sudden the world will look like someone dropped oil all over it, and everything just looks black. Just the textures just appear black. Oh, beautiful. And it's like, at first, Artsy. it's not that bad. But later on, it's literally like I'm playing Splatoon, only everyone's using black ink. Oh. Thank God. <laughs> that sounds like a problem with your graphics card, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, the drivers... I'm, running the, I'm running the game on a potato with a hamster wheel attached to it. Yeah. Also, the hamster's dead. Yeah, so, that's going to be... I did have Windows 10 to fix a problem, because my Windows update didn't work for like two years. So I upgraded to Windows 10 to get around that. Got kind of turned off all the spy on me settings but still wasn't really happy with it reverted back to 7 and I had to reinstall seven. 7 because of issues and now my PC is missing a bunch of stuff and I'm very confused a lot of the time yeah so I basically I don't think... got the basics I don't think we mentioned this before but Noah is on a TF2 team oh yes yes Iron League Highlander if any of you know that um, part of NAD yeah, and N A D H NAD needed Spencer here. It's fun. Um, next season for Iron League. Reminder for all you people that are actually you know listening to this and actually are part of it. You know, it starts around December or January, I think. So, and you know, sign up soon. You don't want to want to be right. late. I mean, I know it's like you know I googled, three months away. I googled but... Iron League Highlander. Very first result is so. How low is the UGC Iron Division? Okay, at <laughs> okay. You have to know that there's four, three major game modes. I'm, I'm not sure if there's any others. I'm not like there's three major game modes for competitive Team Fortress: four v four, six v six, and Highlander. Four v four is the load out, the go out is usually one soldier, one medic, one demo man, one scout, and it's more or less just a smaller version of six v six from what I know. Six v six is two scouts, two soldiers, one demo, one medic. You can have other classes, but that's the normal loadout for it. And six v six was made with traditional shooting shooters in mind, because traditional shooters was five v five or six v six teams like Counter Strike or Call of Duty competitive. And Highlander is, although some people call it a glorified pub, in my opinion, Highlander is how it's meant to be played because it's one of each class, nine versus nine. Uh, also, I play engineer. Um, and the thing is with Iron Division is that. There's iron, steel, silver, gold, and platinum. Platinum is like world tier, world famous kind of thing, like world famous chicken and taters, stuff like that. Um, iron, now the problem with iron is that it's the lowest of the low. It's like you're just starting out, just starting to play. But the real difference between iron and steel is very little. In fact, it's more or less just a general, not so much skill, just... I've heard it knowledge. being described as some forms of skill. Yeah, just game knowledge, I suppose, would be the correct term. I'm sorry if I'm rambling a bit much, but that's really it. I mean, I'm knowledgeable about the game, but I'm more or less starting in Iron, because if you don't have Iron experience, most Steel teams will tell you no. I'm sorry so if I rambled. For, that was for those of you who are listening to the podcast and realize that it's not actually much of a visual medium, as he started talking and talking, I completely glossed over. I'm not sure what's going on. I heard <laughs> Iron a lot. I'm and... sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking about shit that I, I only care about and no one else does. Iron is good. Well, I guess... Whenever the uh, TF2 league starts up, um, the tournaments and stuff, we could start to talk about that and do I some... I mean, if you want. Yeah. Make I, mean, I, TF2, you, I... I mean, if we could yeah. come up with a team uh, for the people that work with IRL and everything, like that would be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, I'd be more than welcome to give you guys tips and shit, although I'm just saying this right now, you'll probably get to Stuart. Just saying. Don't want to be that guy, but it'll probably happen. Be that guy. Yeah, probably. Never, never, never apologize for being that guy. Always be that guy. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, wake okay, up like every you. morning, look with in the mirror me, and go, right, I'm going to be that fucking guy. Yeah, I'm going to ruin someone's day. With being destroyed in TF2 versus being destroyed in CSGO, TF2 is a lot more fun for me. Because with... TF2's community, is, I mean, I'm not sure if it's because it's free-to-play or if it's just the nature of the game. CSGO is meant to be the serious, gritty down yeah. and dirty just shooting people 
shooter, and of course you're gonna get those types that are like perfectionists and shit like that, and that that does exist in Team Fortress 2, but I believe it's to a lesser degree because Team Fortress 2, well, hats, that's the only word I can use to describe the community, because let's be honest, when you add hats, stupid silly looking hats to a character with a big oversized minigun, and an overly stereotypical Russian accent, and he's just so fucking stupid and funny. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to take the game that seriously. You can't legitimately look at Heavy with a toque, big old goggles, running around with mittens, yelling medic, and you can't you can't look at that and not laugh. Yeah, like with games, shooter games or any games, that you have to wait one to three minutes after you die for the next round to die in the next first twenty seconds. That's not like really fun to me. With yeah. TFT, where Team you Fortress... respawn, even though you might have to wait ten, maybe twenty seconds, that's okay. But you're gonna go back well, in. To and be you fair, have a that chance. also depends on game mode because yes. yeah. CS:GO has game, game mode. modes where you can respawn. And when I played CS:GO a little, I always picked a game mode where I could just respawn yeah. because I didn't want to have to fuck around. Yeah. Yeah. So, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to TF2, honestly. I, it's just one of my favorite games, and I know it's free to play, but it's one of my favorite favorite games. It's nice, so let's try it's to segue cool, into, into another number thing. Uh, oh boy! Speaking of number two, uh, oh Fanta Jack, Fantastic Four was number two oh, at the box office this week. Oh, that's you know, number worse. number two. I'd rather you talk about defecation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the biggest flop of the year. At least it oh, seems so that way. Vague, so vaguely was right. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. The yeah. only thing it, is... I've heard nothing about it personally. I don't oh, understand. You've got four characters. The Incredibles is a good film. How do you yeah, fuck this it up can again? Work. It's in the comic I've books. Read, I've it's read worked. that apparently. I read that apparently a big problem is that the film feels like two different films because halfway through the sort of it changes slightly. Yeah, because the company was like, some well. Sort of dispute. We also, know we have. What we'll was wrong ahead. with? They showed early like teaser trailers, and in the early teaser trailers, they go to like they go in the fucking space teleport thing. I haven't yeah. seen the actual film, but I know from later trailers they changed this, and they go to what looked like an alien planet, and it was all green and all mysterious, and it was like, whoa, this is like an alien planet. But a few months later, they release another trailer, and they've just changed all that to lava. Yeah. Why throw that out? Why not be creative? Why I... not be a little fun? It may have been because the writers were just not sure how to go, because, what, it's Fantastic Four, is what you said, right? Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, um, I think it's easier for a writer to explain planet of lava than planet of aliens, and then you have to say what the aliens look like. Don't and explain it! Or not. Leave you mystery! Kinda... You don't well, the need thing to is, explain it. They're, they're, the they're, director, strangers yeah. on a, they're strangers on a different world. Not explaining stuff makes it feel better for the audience because they yeah. relate to the characters don't just turn it into lava and go yeah, well, leave the job done okay so yeah, let me say something true. about the film itself the director after the film came out he tweeted hey this wasn't my film pretty much huh. and so it was i think it was more of the company because the last times that they've well the original fantastic four film was just a very low budget it, i mean it was so low budget for what they did, it was actually kind of interesting on how they did it with such a low budget. But it was just a way to keep the licensing going. The thing That's... looks like a dried up meat wad, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> I don't understand. It kind of seems like all these sequels are just sequels and or reboots are just ways to get the licensing keep yeah, going, the, the, no matter the, how bad of a flop. The Fantastic Four film they brought out literally just came out so they could keep the licensing. But I don't understand because Fox... Sometimes have good films and sometimes mm -hmm. have awful films, and the awful films always seem you can always sense an element of like some sort of corporate muddling or meddling. Yeah. And and they know that that's having an effect, but they still let it happen. Just let just let people just let talented creative people make good shit. Yeah, let the and be like, fans oh, have some good fun. Shit. We're gonna go put that in a, in a cinema. Don't go. Yeah, but green's a bit hard on the eyes. <laughs> I do quite like lava. I was watching Lord of the Rings the other day, and they went to a lava mountain. Can you change it? And for example, for as far as I can tell, good, uh, super well, 
technically a superhero because it's just in that genre of film, but anti-hero films, Deadpool, like, that seems more for the fans. Of course, Deadpool people who... looks like a lot of fun, and that stops oh, yeah. the game! I haven't... I still haven't watched if... the trailers. I've seen the pictures and all that stuff. I... It's if they know things, it's gonna just... make money, it's gonna make money. I mean, that was that Deadpool's the kind of character that everyone's gonna laugh a, at, a and big, honestly, they know it. A big boost yeah. for the Deadpool thing, though, is that apparently, um, fuck, who's playing him again? Was it Ron Reynolds? Right. Yeah. Yeah. He he apparently got to he got to have a lot of input on it, um, and he's actually like a big fan of the character, and mm -hmm. you can tell in interviews and stuff he's definitely like he's had an effect and. He's actually been able to be the character, unlike Fantastic Four, where they just kind of went, yeah, diversity you... quota, guy in orange. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, if you want, you have to something find that... an actor that wants to be the character. You, like, I don't. Yeah. I understand sometimes it's like no one wants to be that character, but you find someone who is best for the role. You can't just put. Even if they've know, never heard of it. Yeah, because you have to know that. Sorry, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts. It's okay. If you get if you give someone a job they don't like, they're gonna be probably bad at it. Yeah. That's the thing. It, it's same as if you give someone a role they don't like, they may not act as I don't know what's the word. I don't want to say as well, but skillfully. Skill. Sure, that'll that'll work. I guess yeah. that works because they want to act as someone that they can relate to, and when you can relate to someone, you can already kind of get their character, and that helps. Yeah. In every way. It also, you also need to make sure you've got good direction that is actually allowed to happen, because the Fantastic Four film, I think they hired a bunch of pretty unknown people to try well, and sort of, well, like, you know, try and give them... Except a, like, for a, uh, uh, Invisible Girl, or whatever her face is. Invisible Girl. Yes. Invisible Girl? Uh, Invisible to be fair, Girl! Go! To be fair, I don't think anyone remembers their names. I don't. I know the thing. <laughs> Not after and, Blue and Storm, it. Reed Richards, Tony Storm, and Ben Grimm, I think. Okay, so the female actress, she's been known for years. Yeah, she's been known for a while. But the the and other like too the bad we don't know her name, huh? <laughs> I don't give a shit. If, she, if, give she, shit. if she's been known for years, how come we don't know her name? Yeah, but it's just one of those things. Like, I can't think of it just right now. The big now. problem with Fantastic Four is that because you have a lot of moving parts, there's a lot that needs to happen oh, that's yeah. difficult to maybe do in a film. And especially stuff with, like, Doom on paper is a really silly fucking villain, and he's hilarious mm -hmm. for it. But then if you go a bit deeper into the character, he's actually really interesting. Problem oh, yeah. is... In a two-hour film, you can't convey that Doom's this really interesting character with this, like, deep backstory and twisted motives. I mean, it's possible. He's just a dude in a metal mask called Doom. Yeah. That's silly as shit. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you... You'd have to have a separate film for Doom and the Fantastic Four. And you know what? That might fucking work. I mean, they've do done it. films like that where I they really explain, do. without even just saying it straight out, like, this is what happens... I mean, there's plenty of films that do that correctly. And you were talking about the trailer where it was just, holy shit, this is going to be amazing. I was the same way. Like, this was going to be worth it. The only time, like, the only reason I watched that trailer is because I was like, oh, this might be a pile of shit. And then I watched it, and I was wrong. At least with the first trailer. And then it slowly turned into a Fantastic Four film. The pro I mean, there, there's the problem with general, and I think there's also a problem that the X-Men films suffer from, is that with comic IPs, you have a lot of stuff that already oh, is kind yeah. of there, and you have to bring that in, and you have to shift it so it works better for a more mainstream audience that wants to go watch a film and work for the fans. And with, <laughs> like, one character films like Iron Man and Thor, get that character, it's focused on them, they get to, it's their story, they get to kind of, yeah. and the people react with stuff like X-Men and Fantastic Four, because you have so many people, because it's meant to be a group, it's difficult. And that's why the Avengers work a lot better, because each of those characters had their film and they got introduced. You and can't really do that. a way to grip otherwise. the fans. Yeah, because I mean, the, the Avengers yeah. was a bunch of people getting together later on, whereas Fantastic Four is a bunch of people getting together at the start. And it's kind of hard to give everyone their equal amount of, like, you know, time in the sun under a certain time limit like what what's the average movie time nowadays like an hour and a half two hours yeah. yeah it's you have to remember you have to get the action scene in there you have to get the story in there you have to get 
character introduction in there, and then you have to find a way to balance out every single character's little story arc or, or with, something to introduce yeah. them. I was Meanwhile, watching the... Oh, you go gotta ahead. segue it all together. So you're already under a time constraint, so it's either make the movie longer and making people bored because, oh, we get to hear more about Ben's big sad story, no offense, Ben, but, you know, it's just, or see Doom fly around, lasers, kapow, that kind of thing. Of all yeah. the characters you could talk shit about, you would talk about the guy who's a massive fucking monster and Doom. I ain't talking shit about me. I'll talk shit okay. about Reed Richards, he just has a twisty dick. I didn't talk <laughs> shit about Doom, I just said Doom shoots lasers, okay? Ben, I didn't talk shit about. Although to be fair, like I said earlier, he's kind of creepy. He's basically he's basically meat wad with arms, legs, and he's dried up. It's meat wad. The, I don't the know best, why. The best way I can see like fantastic. Doom, okay. The, the best way I can see a fantastic fourth from working out is actually start with Doom, and have a Doom story where he's kind of he's the main character, and at the end of it, you kind of realize he's not. You know, he's. I mean, it's difficult because the film would be called Doom, so you'd kind of know he's not exactly going to be so, the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. Okay. But then I was watching the Fantastic Four. I was watching the film first the other day, and they were talking about uh, the Oscars, like how to win a proper Oscar, and the laws of okay, what are the specific things you need to have in a film to win the most amount of Oscars? And they were saying the amount, like the longer the movie is, the more oscars it's going to go for i mean the oscars are all political anyway i don't yeah. really know if you can come up with a formula for the oscars because the oscars is all that kind of i mean it's the film the oscars so are you're gonna, yeah, get a for film, a lot of people but... isn't like the oscars a bunch of people voting for it well, yeah, there's there's voting for it and there's yeah. money changing hands and it's just a load of political shit that doesn't really translate into a proper fair award ceremony yeah yeah because and it's more about just like, a show if it was a biopic about world war ii about filmmakers over three hours. That was pretty much the deduction of what will win you the most uh, Oscars. I mean, a good way to win Oscars is to do a film about Hollywood and show how great it is. Because yeah, again, it much... is if you just oh, yeah, ma- but... if you just make a film jacking off Hollywood, you'll get fifty Oscars. Yeah, yeah. find no one in it. But, it could uh... just be literally the director sitting there masturbating, going, "Oh, I love Hollywood," and he'd get fifty awards. So going back to uh, yeah. Fantastic Four for a second, oh, with the recent to... flop. Just for a little second, with the recent flop, I mean, you had Spider-Man for years being made by Sony, and then they gave it to Marvel. Well, they kind of bought it back, but I mean, Marvel yeah. had Sony, to sell Sony a lot. Sony had a bit of... of a hit and miss because Sony's the first Spider-Man film for the time, not amazing, but the first Spider-Man film was you know good. The second one was still pretty good. The third one was just fuck awful. Amazing yeah. Spider-Man one and two are. Good, but nothing mm. special. Yeah. The third, the third DVD. Spider-Man, third Spider-Man went really fast for me. It's like we'll introduce Sandman, and then he dies in like the next oh, scene. There's and so then much there's going Venom on in that and film, then, and they yeah, waste time like, having Peter Parker dress like, up. Yeah, there's like three. There's there's three villains in the movie. One of them dies almost right off the bat, aka Sandman, which sucks because Sandman's really cool, and I think they could have done something really nice. And at the end, him. wasn't there then like had, eight more villains? No, it was like. It was like, uh, what? Right off the first bat, there's like Green Goblin 2 or whatever his name is. Fucking, I don't know. It was like Green Goblin's kid. I can't yeah, remember the exact Yeah, it was Harry it. Osborn. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't, it was the, doesn't the third he... film start out with Harry Osborn chasing Speederman? Yeah, I, I think it Biederman? does. But to be fair, to be fair, yeah. I probably wouldn't be able to remember because what? That fight scene lasted maybe 10 minutes or something like that at most and yes. then it stopped and never was it mentioned for the rest of the movie <sighs> and then you have the sandman thing and then what after that it mentioned venom and it was like like okay cool venom we're talking about it spider-man's changing he's turning black all that cool stuff and then sandman all of a sudden and then sandman's dead and then the rest of it is venom and honestly I think they just wanted to cram as many recognizable <clears throat> villains into that movie as they could because what you had Doc Ock already. You had your Green Goblin, and now it's like, well, we we want to make more, so we figured if we put the more villains in here, that means more action and more money. I do. Which I'm I do think it's sure was wrong. At that point, that was that was probably a a, a board of directors type of situation where they're just trying to work out how to make the most money out of it. Because Spider Man One and Two were actually, especially for the time, they were good oh, yeah. superhero films back before we were having all these this like oh, golden yeah. era. For things Amazing Spider-Man were... works, yeah. it's just not 
amazing. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, it isn't it's comparable. Lack, it's the lackluster. Really. It's it's yeah. the lackluster Spider-Man. Also, this but is irrelevant in a small way, but the Spider-Man one and two games really good, but I don't even think they made a three one. I yeah. like Spider-Man one, but I, I I never ended up the first mission. You're on the rooftops and you can't go down. Like not in Spider-Man, like in Spider-Man two, where you can go down onto the the uh, the street. No, you can't. You wasn't that the rooftops. one where you go bowling? There was one that was pretty They're cool. All very weird. Okay, Beautiful I think it was though. for a PS2, I... and you you go bowling. Our like that was a mini game. game. Like a robot. Yeah, actually, I like Spider-Man One. Actually, that was probably one of my favorite games. There was all those challenges and shit. Honestly, if yeah. no one's played it for the original Xbox or PlayStation Two, go check that out. It's actually yep. really fun. But back to the Spider-Man movie thing. It's like my idea for Spider-Man Three. It was probably, I imagine, what happened is. They had, like, their board of directors or whatever, and they were just talking, and they were like, oh, we want this villain, well, I want this villain. And they just kind of said, well, okay, we'll each go our own way, write our own parts, and then try to mash it together into some kind of Frankenstein. Yeah. And that's what happened, because honestly, it feels like it didn't flow nicely. It felt like, oh, this villain's done, let's move on to the next one. It's not it really like a film, it's a collection of separate scenes. Yeah. It's, it's a it's... collection of separate scenes that don't really gel. Talking honestly, about flowing nicely in sequels, uh... So at D23, The Incredibles 2, Cars 3, oh, and Cars 3, and a few others were announced. Uh, what do you guys think of those? Who the fuck wants to go see Cars 3? Who the fuck wanted to go see Cars 1? <laughs> I, I, liked, I liked Cars 2 and 1, to be honest. I mean, I, I enjoyed know, Cars 1, don't get me wrong. As a novelty to go when I was young? It. I mean, yeah. I liked, yeah, when I was a kid, I liked them. I still kind of like them, but only for Mater, a.k.a. Larry the Cable Guy, because personally, I find As a really nostalgia... Funny film in like a yeah. disney way yeah. maybe yeah. but a film that isn't really a disney-ish pixar thing eh, no I mean, cars 3 sounds like it's gonna be really weird i mean didn't they just yeah. have cars plane edition earlier yeah, I yeah. planes and then uh, dude just, ooh, i watched ooh. planes just so i could see how bad it was going to be because dane cook i mean i i gave a little bit of leeway because fucking you know, dane cook's in it <laughs> yeah and it was Why shit. you do that to yourself it was a... You may as well crash all the planes right off the bat. Jesus. Just... Yeah. So many planes died. Also, Incredibles that was 2. Actually... I mean, it was kind of I funny. would be excited for Incredibles 2. I loved Incredibles, honestly. And I oh, yeah, it's, it's a good film. Like it was it's a great film. movie. way to do Fantastic Four. Fun Port. game, too. But how yeah. do you... Just doesn't the game actually carry on from the film? I um, no, it don't takes... Don't know. The game... The game is the exact same as the film, and then they had a second one or a second game I never played that more or less took place at the end of the film where it's like that mole guy out of nowhere. Yeah, I remember playing a demo never... for Incredibles game where you start off and you're Frozone and Mr. Incredible and you're yeah. running around and you're fighting stuff and it was... But the first Incredibles game was actually really fun. First movie I really liked. And Incredibles 2, I'm interested to see what they're going to do. I, I think mean, the, how I long think, has yeah. it been? About it's been years. Yeah. I think and the only they reason really... they're doing Incredibles Jesus, that 2 was a long time ago. Because... Yeah. I think the only reason they're doing Incredibles 2 is because they saw they were kind of looking at Fantastic Four and they thought, yeah, we, we can do it do better. This better. We'll just yeah. do it better. They can come out. They can flop. We'll we'll fix it all. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they de I mean, I am okay with Pixar picking up a new style of Fantastic Four and saying we're well, not really picking up, but picking up the pieces of what happened and at saying, this point, hey, it can happen. If, this the Incredibles, yeah. if the Incredibles family appears in Civil War, <laughs> I'm totally down for it. I don't give a shit anymore. That's fine. That works. I'd love to see, like, what, Jack was his name? The baby? The little yeah. baby? I, I'd love to see oh. him as, like, a toddler. That'd be cool. I, uh, that's one thing I was interested yeah. in, because the entire movie I was really interested in that little kid for some reason. Maybe it was because, what, the movie came out when I was, like, six so I was constantly paying attention to like the like any scene that had the baby in it was really interesting and really fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested definitely to trying... see what they're gonna do. The newest releases so far are kind of playing on nostalgia, just a little bit. Like well, you can Star argue Wars that Land. with any movie. Star Wars what? Star Wars Land. Star it's taken over a Toontown. I think so. Explain Star Wars Land. What is this? It sounds like a, a theme park. It's going to be part of, uh, I think it's both U.S. Disney theme parks. 
and at least one major one in California oh. and a few others. But yeah, this is going to be pretty much the biggest area of uh, the Disney theme park. I think it was like 12 acres, maybe 16, something like that. I have no uh, idea uh, how when, little when of this... a shit I give about a theme park. But it's Star Wars. I mean, it's... yes. You yeah. can go into Star a cantina Wars. and drink blue different... milk for $20. Why would you want to drink for $20? I can make blue milk at home. I would want to fly to America know? to do all that yeah. shit. Because you, you fuck you, that's why it's, it's called, Star Wars. It, you can you can make it at home. It's called blueberries and milk. And it probably would taste better. I'm 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 not gonna lie. I mean knowing Disney is a super secret evil corporation, clearly, according to all the creepy passages I've read, it's probably like, I don't know, the blood of the innocent, only colored I mean, blue. I would say some Actually, of those creepy pastas, shit. I don't know. I haven't really read or listened to them. But yeah. uh, Walt Disney was very anti-Semitic, but who knows? You know, and, Disney. Uh, okay. I mean, the Disney has gone from Disney, being anti-Semitic reason... to just being creepy. Well, okay. The reason yeah. Walt Disney. I mean, you're cutting out. You like Jewish people? Oh, you? Am, am I cutting out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Why Walt sorry. Well, sorry. The, Jewish people. The reason Jewish people. He didn't... Yeah. No, the reason he didn't like Jewish people, if I recall right, was. He was presenting movies like, say, for example, Snow White or something like that. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that was the exact movie, but he was presenting these ideas saying, you like them. And most of the people that he was presenting them to were Jewish, and they said, nah, we don't, we don't like that idea. We're going with some other ones. And they doubted him constantly. So it's not so much he hated Jewish as a religion. He just hated Jews because it just so happened well, the people that were doing things to him that did he didn't like make were Jewish. a sort of pro-Nazi animation so, to be again, that was probably more an in-your-face kind of thing to those specific people. That's, I mean, what, uh, that's not really more I mean, in-your-face. It's, it's more of an era with you, different people from yeah. different times. Now, all we need to focus on is the fact that Disney owned fucking everything. Yeah, and one day, and they're going to have yeah. to pledge your allegiance to the to the mouse of Mickey. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm. When Disney got Star Wars, I instantly thought, oh boy, I can't wait for the five-minute movie, mini-movie thing before the next movie I go to where it's Mickey Mouse is being Luke Skywalker. Oh, my immediate thought was fucking like, Kingdom Hearts. When Kingdom, oh. Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is going to be kind of cool. I've never when, played when, Kingdom Hearts, be while, but though. I can see that being Have cool. Have you never sure. played Kingdom Hearts? Oh. No, I've oh, never. Dude. I've played Final Fantasy <sighs> games a bit, but I've never played Kingdom Hearts. Okay, I really... Been... I didn't play Which one PlayStation is... as a kid. Oh, I didn't play PlayStation as a kid. That was okay, oh, Noah, step out of the room. This is me and Bailey. We're gonna talk about Kingdom oh, Hearts. So, you... out of the games, except for 365, that sort of does and doesn't really count. Which one is your favorite? But fucking 365 counts. The important plot information happens there. It's a really good DS game. I suppose you know, you know mine because we did the Twitter thing. Uh, both of ours is I think Kingdom Hearts two. Oh no, no that's someone else. Mine's Kingdom Hearts I don't really play Nintendo that much anymore, so... Yeah, but Kingdom Hearts isn't Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, it's the same here. Some of them are on Nintendo, some of them are on Sony consoles. Yeah. It's the yeah. weirdest shit. Honestly, I, fucking nonsense. I had the Game Boy Advance version of uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, Do you I had, think. You had the Game Boy... No, no, Kingdom Hearts 1 wasn't on Game Boy Advance. You had Chain okay. of Memories. Yeah, yeah. With the card game. Uh-huh. Oh my god, I can't find that anywhere! Dude. Dude. I have the, I have the... I was so fucking boss at it years ago, and now it's just, I'm such shit at it, but I, I have still love it. one, two days, um, Dream Drop Distance, I have a copy of Coded somewhere, pre-coded, not the original Coded, because that was Japanese mobile market only. I feel only. so out of the loop right now, and... it's not even funny. Okay, okay, Noah, what, 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 last what, gen what, consoles what, do you own? What, what, Speak English! What last gen consoles do you own? Last gen, like as in 360s or and stuff previous like that. Gens. We have a 360, a PS3 that I barely use and only use the 360 to play. I don't know, grab by the ghoulies. Which, you can, you can get. I don't know. If if you if you're if you're interested in Kingdom Hearts, if you're interested in picking up any point, you mm. can get for the PS3 the HD 1.5 remix, which is basically an HD collection for Kingdom Hearts One. Chain of Memories, and kind oh. of one of the third games, but not really one of the I'll third consider. games. I'll consider it. I really yeah. will consider it. It seems cool, I'll be honest. I mean... I need, to, I, need I, to, up... I need to do a series on it. I need to do, like, Let's Play Kingdom Hearts. The, 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 game, the game system... I would totally do that with you. 
game systems I grew up with, even though, like, because my mom was, um, like, my mom was the one that introduced me to games, and, like, we had game consoles, we had NES and stuff like that, I didn't play those. My, the games I played was kind of Nintendo, and most of my time was on the original Xbox, which is, like, my favorite console. And we, we had a PlayStation with Spyro on it, and I, yeah. I did not I did not like Spyro. I mean, I liked Resident Evil, like but to be fair, we had it on GameCube. I oh. didn't. It's. I only didn't like Spyro as a kid because there's this one part I couldn't get past because I was confused, and then I just went to go play <laughs> Grab by the Ghoulies, and then I had fun. Which is a game yeah. that on. I'm not sure if you ever heard of Grab by the Ghoulies. I think so. Heard of it? <clears throat> no. Okay. All right. Here's a little history lesson. So when Microsoft <laughs> first bossed Rare, bossed. I meant bought. When Microsoft first bought Rare, <coughs> they made the first game. I, I'm 90 percent sure this is the first game that Rare made with Microsoft. It was called Grab at a Ghoulies, and it was basically a beat-em-up in a haunted house. You're a guy named Cooper, and you're trying to save, like, people from this Baron Von Ghoul. That's the main bad guy's name. And it was fun. You got to punch skeletons and zombie pirates and ninja imps and imps and mummies and all sorts of cool stuff. No one ever talks about it. I'm not sure why. I'm guessing people just... Because I'm on the original Xbox, even though it was like one of the first games on it, I think. But eh, that's just I mean, me. That's all very good, but have you ever beat the shit out of the main villain from Mulan as Mickey Mouse? <laughs> it's I mean, never worth it. I, I, I feel like I'm going to be killed saying this, but I think I've never watched Mulan. Actually, I don't remember oh, if it was in Mulan all the way through. Hold oh, dude. Dude, Disney would yeah, I can used to play oh, movies. What's the like... song? Oh, God, what's the song? The fucking the man song where they're singing and they're like. Oh yeah, turn you into men. Make a man, make a man out of you. Make I know a man that out of you. Song. Oh, yes. Disney song used to play like of... the really good stuff, even like the cheesy one-time only movies. You guys, as you soon guys as I got about... home from school, it was amazing. You guys know about um, AGDQ and SDGQ, yeah? Yeah, uh, uh, I do which know is... about the letters of the alphabet. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I... Summer Games Done Quick and Awesome Games Done oh, yeah, Quick. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a yeah speed running thing. When they did the on one of them, they did the Kingdom Hearts two speed run. Jack, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, um, I never finished it. 705, never... you might be a little more confused, but that's fine. You'll kind of understand. I never I really got had to do the gummy Tron. missions of Kingdom so. Hearts 2. They sung Disney songs, and the very first song they got to sing was I'll Make a Man Out of You. It's just <laughs> the funniest shit. It's just the funniest thing seeing this room of like people who know the, all these intricacies of all these different video games and can complete them in like 10 minutes, all just singing a Disney song. It's just <laughs> yeah. this... Wonderful moment you wouldn't see anywhere else. Yeah. You were talking about we, uh, old gen, old, we went, old school gen. We went from technically. We like, went. We went from talking about Incredibles to talking about old school video games. Yeah, I mean, Jeez. I would say PS2 what would jump. be old school by now because it's PS2 has been old school for a while. I had a PS. I, mean, I, still... I had a PS1 and I didn't play it very much. Like I said, PlayStation wasn't my cup of tea. I liked X Boner. I'm still. I've got. I mean, I'm gonna. I, I for one call my original Xbox One, uh, Xbox, Xbox One, and call my brother's PS, uh, I Xbox still One. Still question why they called it the Xbox One? Because they didn't. Because at because that point it's a they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing because they what? had a shitty CEO who made shitty decisions and tried to kill his own console. Yep. And then they got a good CEO even before it was out. Revert the name change, but fixed every fucking else. Like, we got simple, okay? We got PlayStation 1, 2, 3. For Wii, we got, like, for from Nintendo, it's the GameCube, the Wii, the Wii U. Yeah, Nintendo's it's awesome basic their simple. own thing. Then, we, then, like, I mean, that has no rhyme or reason, but it's you Nintendo, know, so we're gonna let them off the leash of that. And Xbox, Xbox 360, and it would make sense if the next one was, like, Xbox 720, or 1080, I don't know. Yeah, something but like that. Xbox 360, then Xbox One. That's like going forward, then going immediately you know back. what bugs me about Nintendo's naming scheme? They got slowly and slowly more literal with like Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo 64, and then GameCube, which was literally a cube that you could play games on. And then they went to Wii! We the made... Because, because yeah. of Wii! Because, because Wii! Like, you know... Because uh, like... it was almost what? as much as a New boner 3DS. than the oh Xbox God. boner. They released the 3DS and then they released oh, the God, new God. 3DS, but the new don't, 3DS's name isn't the new... Don't even, the separate name is the don't, new don't 3DS, not the 3DS, the new that. 3DS. Don't even get me started on whoever... Because Wii U and all that, fine, whatever. It's weird, but whatever. You have the, the 3DS... <laughs> Uh, okay, here you got your DS, you got your DS XL, you got your DSi, you, then you got your 3DS, 
your 3DS XL, and you got your new 3DS, and your new 3DS XL. I, I don't even know what, anymore. What, what was going on in that meeting where they were sitting there going, right, we, we've got an upgrade for the for the 3DS, uh, but what should we call this upgrade? I, think, I don't know, Jimmy. I, I new remember, 3DS. Reading, I love it. I remember reading okay, somewhere so... that the reason they named it the new 3DS is because in Japan, new is like a really big word. It's like, to us, it's like new. It's new. <laughs> to them, it's like, it's new! Oh, like, you don't understand. Like, it's one of those things, like, you know how you put in the commercial, it's great, it's amazing? In Japan, you put, it's new. They like new shit, and that's what, and they sold in Japan, is basically it's it. It's new, new! I mean, new, I can understand. And I can understand them doing that for Japan, but doing it for the rest of the world, everyone's just wondering why. Because why is not like, CNN why? and Fox News big there? <laughs> because <laughs> the, the new Fox News? We're gonna call everything new now? We got yeah. new Ritz like it, crackers. It's news. New Pizza Hut. It's not correct. I mean, news, it, but, I yeah. mean, people like people like new stuff. It's why yeah. we just but, put new on everything. I mean, we except for in America, Steam. people don't like change. But yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the South. Anyway, so uh, what's our next? It's uh okay. Re so Republicans. Our, uh, what? Oh, I was saying Republicans. Like it's uh. You know, you said Republicans or something like that. Okay. Well, it's God. Dang, it's Republicans. We'll, we'll call them it's the Republicans. It's scientifically men. proven now, that they don't like change. It's they really scientifically don't. Proven they're, it's scientifically proven that they're elephants. It's scientifically so. proven that if you suck enough cocks, you'll get good at cock sucking. That doesn't, you know, mean okay. anything. All right, so Lots I was going to prove of science talk, and a peanut. Do you guys want to talk about uh, Star Wars again for a little bit? Star Wars? Sure. Uh, I will. I, I only have one thing to say about the Star Wars thing. I did not get Disney Infinity because it was a, it, it didn't interest me, and you know okay. I didn't have the console for it. So have However, you guys played? I will Battlefront. admit, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront. I like played it the older a long ones. time ago with my friend. Briefly, I didn't hate it. I it was cool, I guess, but I can imagine playing online was probably a lot. I'm um, the exact same. I I the did thing hear, is... however. Yeah. That apparently they got rid of a single player story and a lot of people yeah. were angry about that. That's what I was going to talk about. Because Why? Like a lot of games are pushing now for hey, if you want this $60 game, you have to have internet. And if our servers go down, you're fucked. And you just wasted that's, $60. That's a problem. I believe Actually, that pretty much any game I believe that pretty much any game should have some form of single player option that gives you something yeah. to play in it. Now I understand T I understand I understand TF two is different. Mm -hmm. I, I mean TF two it was made specifically for shit. multiplayer. I mean, TF2 There's also no single shit player. With some other single player stuff with the Yeah, that, box, so. that was it. I mean there are games out there that are specifically made for <laughs> multiplayer and that's fine. That makes yeah. sense. But, but I... there are some games that you have to have some form of single player experience because people will play that. Well, I'd, argue, I'd argue against that in the exact same way I'd argue against attacked on multiplayer. I don't think you should tack on a single player for the sake of having a single player. If you have a good multiplayer game, yeah. develop for the multiplayer game and develop that well. Don't All right, yeah. push resources aside. Don't I, stick yeah. on a single player because that's what would yeah. happen. Because that's like Brink. Brink, which is a game I really enjoyed, has a quote-unquote single player, which is literally just a bunch of multiplayer maps with a story. Hmm. Like okay. Titanfall yeah. did. Just do multiplayer and do it well. If you want to build a lore in that, build a lore in that. That's what I have a problem with in Titanfall. They do the weird single player stuff and then the multiplayer is completely separate for some reason. Build a lore in the multiplayer. Do that. Don't and, waste uh, resources yeah. pirating yeah, voice you're... actors for shit. I think you were talking so. about, yeah, that makes you know, sense. The uh, Xbox sort of starter games like Titanfall. Uh, as far as I know, like Destiny, I haven't played it that much because the X-Bone... Uh, it's disc drive as shit. Um, but yeah, there's sort I of heard... a story there, but it's also multiplayer. So it's kind yeah. of like, it's working I... with that, sort of. I heard a story about, apparently there is an Xbox One update where, like, I don't know, apparently the disc drive, like, shot open on someone and slit their neck open with a game disc. I'm that's... not even <laughs> sure that's true. a myth. That's not that, true. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like, how is that even possible? Like, I mean, y you didn't spray the damn are... disk drive to fire it out at yeah. rapid speeds. That would make no sense. That'd be stupid. So, uh, talking about other multiplayer games, we were talking, uh, I think it was before the pre-show or during that, the uh, Rainbow Six uh, Siege, is it? Call I... of Duty Siege, you mean. Okay. Um, 
That yeah, it's had potential. That's wasted. It has a free beta My, right now that you can go and sign up for. The... If you're up for that, then you know that's yeah. totally on your own. I signed up yeah. for it just because I want to try it out. You know, I want to see yeah. if I want to if it gives me a demo or whatever. That's totally okay. Like, I don't want to pay for a sixty or forty dollar game and not like it. The only reason yeah. I got CS:GO is because other people had it and it wasn't too expensive. The problem with Rainbow Six Siege is that it's very heavily dependent on two full teams of people who are two separate teams communicating completely throughout the entire thing mm -hmm. for a full ex and are like yeah. completely in the experience. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't build a game on that. Have you yeah. met people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people are people shit. instantly don't like each other. That's that's a thing. I mean, there's two things you, you can do to remedy this. Either one, make it so that the teams are bigger, because if you have a bigger team, then communication isn't too much of an issue because you already have vast numbers. Like, no need to be smart when you can literally just outnumber someone in a situation. Either that, or I don't know, maybe find some way. I'm not sure, because in a situation where you have to get to know everyone at once. That's a problem that I have with like CSGO competitive when you just go into the servers and you just play with random people. You, there are going to be people you don't like. There are going to be people that are assholes. And by default, in a game that depends on the whole team working together towards the goal, that doesn't work. Unless so, you have a huge number of people, at which point then everyone can kind of do their own thing and everything should go fine. What also doesn't help is that at least in the footage that I've always seen, like in the gameplay footage they've shown and the trailers that they've shown, some of the stuff on the Defender side doesn't even seem like it fucking works. Because they showed, like, Defenders, they put up these barriers on doors and they put up all these, like, blockades, but they just get shot through as easily as a door. Which... Well, speaking of assholes, Fallout 4 was... The, some of the gameplay was leaked on Pornhub. I actually heard about that. Um, I didn't watch it because, you know me, my rule for trailers is if I'm excited about it, don't watch it. If I yeah. don't want to watch it at all, watch it. I, I no had a look to... just because, you know, it was there and I thought, you know, I have a look. Oh, and yeah. The was you were so already awful. on it, so Why would no you... worry. I mean, look, you, you, you're just minding your own business sometimes, trying to find some good stuff, and all of a sudden you stumble across Fallout and you think, you know, let's do this. That's just the and way you're going to you're gonna jerk off, so might as well jerk off and Fallout 4 footage. Oh god, don't fall no one wants to know my opinion on it. No one wants to know my opinion on yeah, I don't think so. Or... No. No one wants to know my opinion I do. on that on Skyrim. Nope. I hate it I hate it when people say, Oh, people don't want to know my opinion. You don't want to know your fucking opinion. Okay. Don't tell me what I want. Okay. What you I don't mean tell is, me who I am. When I say it like that, that's because I already know that the vast majority of people are gonna fight against me on that. And I'm not saying yeah, I probably. don't want people to not counter my argument, but I, mean, I, I just don't want to... I might be I redundant here, more. but have you met people? Who gives a shit? <laughs> I guess, yeah. I, I have know, an like, opinion. If you, if you give a shit, the people are, of course people are going to... Do you want me to... You. Like, do you mind if I... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, assuming, right. I mean, I'm assuming it's that you just... I'm not going to... I'm going to look at it the same way... I'm going to look at Fallout New Vegas slash Fallout 3 to Fallout 4 the same way I look at Oblivion to Skyrim. At first, I okay. might kind of like it, and I did too, but... As time goes on, I'm going to start looking at it, yeah, this is, and I'm using this word, although I'm pretty sure I could probably find another word that's more appropriate, but I'm going to say it like this. It's going to be casualized. It's going to be very streamlined, and it's not going to be as fun. Also, Literally, if you just use streamlined in place of casualized, you'd yeah, probably true. get a better response. Yeah, probably. I guess streamlined would be a better word. But my problem with Fallout 4 is, what, did you see E3? Everyone was saying it was so cool, but I just yeah. want to remind everyone... 90% of that was literally The Sims Fallout Edition. It was building a house. We I'm okay with that. Showed, it showed you don't have story to do that and now. it showed house building. Like, I know, They even but said, still. like, you don't, if you want to, that's cool. The and thing is, they, I, I know, mean, but they there showed are problems so I already much. have with Fallout 4. Like, they've removed the, the, um, the skills. Got, yeah, they've removed skills, pro like, I they just don't that. exist anymore. Which seems like so. the weirdest decision. Skills the base building stats... thing seems cool but only if it works like you're building a base in a wasteland and you, you can actually build a proper base not just put a few houses in a position and go oh that's pretty the gameplay that they've shown where they're fighting seemed interesting and the changes to power armor seemed cool but again oh yeah. it's just kind of i'd wait for the reviews it's yeah. you know it's yeah. not like yeah i mean i'm sure no game has done this but it's not like they've released 
five to six hours of footage and showing yeah. loads of stuff and maybe I'm... showing the same mission done six different times. Oh, yeah. Hi, Jack. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. uh, he... When it comes down <laughs> to it, as an RPG player, one of my favorite things I love doing is character stat building. I love looking at big, long stat sheets and perks and shit and saying, oh, this synergizes well with this. I can build my character oh. to look like this. Ooh. And building to be so cool. I love doing Related that. I this. loved doing that. In a... Related to this. I live, I love... Do you have... Okay. It's these strategy guides. Do you... Have you ever seen the Fallout New Vegas strategy guide? No, I have not seen it. Fallout Why? New Vegas strategy guide was the coolest thing because it actually gave you a set of, like, preset characters, but based off specific things, like a survivalist. Exactly. That's and amazing. one of them, I oh. think it was called John McLean, and you were both... Basically, sick. Like every single one of your stats that was sounds, six, and you had shit skills. That sounds cool. really cool. Yeah, that sounds. That's really not cool. going to exist the in the Fallout 4 strategy. Yeah, open cool. it and they'll go well. Yeah. Put points into but strength so you can like carry is, shit. Yeah. What I like is in in. I'm going to use Fallout here because I mean, when it comes to Oblivion, that's a different story. I love it even more than the Fallout one. But in Fallout, it's like you have your special, and that's going to be in the next one, sure. And I'm fine with that. And one thing I like about Fallout 4 that they showed off is that you're not going to be able to just make all your stats six or put everything into one stat and be fine. No, it's all going to start at zero, and then you have only enough to make some stats good, some stats not as great. And that's really interesting, because it means that your characters have a weakness. You can't be a good all-around guy and stuff like that. that okay, I really so like. this has pretty I don't much like come down to... Is, the... Sorry, is Fallout you... 3 so hyped that it's going to be a Half-Life 3? To be honest, because... if, Fallout, if people are hyping Fallout 3 now, they're a bit late, Jack. <laughs> I mean, sorry, oh, yeah. it's Fallout 4. Words. But, like, uh, Steam is, well, Valve, really, but they're kind of waiting it out till the uh, hype is just kind of gone, and then they'll start to really work. I mean, they've got some stuff going for Half-Life 3, but they're just too worried about releasing it and then it failing. The problem that... is there's never go I mean, Half-Life 3 is special because there's never going to be a point when hype for Half-Life 3 actually disappears, and there are a few games just like it, like Fallout would have been one of those games, the next yeah. Elder Scrolls yeah. game is going to be one of those games, there'll be a point where if they haven't released an Elder Scrolls game, you're going to see 50 articles going, where's the next Elder Scrolls game? Yeah. What are they working on? Because... But yeah, I can guarantee there would any game series you could do that with, with because that. Because a lot if of companies are worried about Duty the games, you could do that. I actually think there's a, there's a small issue with Valve, with how, they, how they're structure is in their company which means that they aren't going to have half-life redeveloped because they don't from what i understand from valve when you when people are hired there they basically get free reign to choose what they want to do and what they don't want to do oh and yeah they, and they then love that changed they a love bit. giving they, yeah i know valve loves giving people like working in the way they want to work i know valve really likes that but the problem is there's i mean there's I, mean, I say the problem it's not really a problem but it kind of becomes a problem because with no somewhat stricter guidance to like focus on a product you don't get anywhere yeah. it's 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 a for not it's i don't really know the best way to describe it but it's like you know how you'd see it's like sort of with hardware limitations for a console where games have to kind of do stuff to get around those limitations when you have mm -hmm. a focus when you have like guidelines and, a, and an idea where you have to work you have to find ways to work in that and get your ideas through and that sort of helps you know like boost creativity we man just with a train given, helmet here's a computer do what you want make i don't know fucking gordon freeman fat what else are you gonna do you're just <laughs> fiddling around having a bit of fun and that's you know that's fine that's that's fun but not if it doesn't go anywhere you're not doing anything with it what's the yeah. point yeah all right but so the problem i think I see was... we're gonna okay, you go. yeah i think we're gonna end this in a little bit so i think i've just talked about metal gear Metal Actually, Gear. I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. Oh, oh, I will give you. Oh, let's say. Oh, Ark, I love you so much. Uh, yeah, man, I love. Two minutes. I love Metal Gear. Oh, two, shit. two okay. minutes. Two minutes for what? Let me get my timer out. Two you minutes have... for what? Two... To okay, talk about just... Metal Gear. Yeah. Just straight up Metal Gear. You know. That's each nowhere week near enough that time. You're on... That's. Do I have to, each week have to make on sure here, I'm not spoiling anything? Yeah. Each week okay. that you're on here, I'll give you two minutes at the end of each episode to talk about Metal Gear. And go. Okay, currently going on is a Metal Gear Solid boot camp where a bunch of reviewers are going to be playing through the game and trying to beat the game at the review section. What's interesting is that because they know that it's not actually the final build of the game, there's some things that are in there that aren't quite working properly, but that goes into spoiler territory, so we can't talk too much about that. But they're given free reign to completely beat the game. One reviewer actually, after playing eight hours came back and said that he'd only um, be, I don't know, 12% of the game. It's insane. 
the, the amount of scope in this is amazing. But what's interesting is that none of them have access to Metal Gear Online, which is actually going to be released later in the month of September for the consoles, but in January sometime for PC, which is strange because they pushed the release date for the PC version of Metal Gear Solid back to September 1st, so it would come out at the same time as the console version. Interestingly enough, you can actually download the PC version slightly earlier, but you can't preload it, so you can't preload and play it on release, but you can try and download it earlier, and if your download speed's high, you can play faster than consoles. But, back to the... They don't have access to a lot of the multiplayer functionality, so they can't test any of that out. And what's interesting, we don't have much information on the Metal Gear Online, which is strange, because it's a really interesting component. It's essentially a separate game, but back to the main game. The main game, we've there's not a huge amount of new information coming out, but every day they're doing a log where you can see a new video, and there's a clip of about 20 seconds, 30 seconds of a silly thing. One of them was they headshot on a guard, his helmet came off, and they reversed it back and forth and played samba music. It was fantastic. So they went through that. And the boot camp's currently going on, but right now there isn't a huge amount of new information apart from the fact that I just really want to rocket punch people. Jack, I'm stopping now. Okay. And we should that call was... that the Metal Gear Minutes. That would be a cool little sketch. We'll call yeah. it the Metal Gear Minutes. That was 126. Oh, nice. <laughs> do you want to? <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to keep talking for the next 30 seconds? Nah. Yeah. I'll give you. Uh, there's not. There's not <laughs> enough information out right now. Okay. Right. okay. The week <clears throat> after next, I'm gonna have a shit done. I'm gonna just. Okay. Throw. So next week. Should we do, should I limit to you to one or two minutes? Because you were really Do rushed. two minutes, but I'll stop when okay. I want. Okay. I'll give you a max limit of two minutes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good and that uh... was the show, everyone. Thanks for listening Thanks. to uh, Breaking the Third Wall. First episode of it. I fucking, I'm okay, still, I, can't. I know. Fourth. We've had this conversation. We've had this before. This conversation never ends. It's no, it doesn't. What it's going to stay. Can I, can I be part of this conversation? Jack, do you want me to explain it so that at least people watching past the very end can have an understanding of why it's called the third? Sure. Breaking the third I mean, wall. if they haven't listened sure. to the previous episodes, because of it's the, the fourth podcast. wall. But continue. In, I think in the, I think it's the very first episode of the original version of this podcast. Painfully through, painfully furrow satirical fear, which is still an awkward thing to say. Yeah. Jack made a comment. That at some point about something breaking the third wall and i'm still not sure if it was a fuck up or if he meant it deliberately but that's stuck and he just says breaking the third wall now even if he means the fourth wall it's weird and i can't no stop sense. him i know it makes no sense i can't stop him he's insane help me 